Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here, bringing you another awesome math video. This video is on uh, limits using a common denominator. So if I got a, uh, I've got an example here, and um, you've probably done these limits before, uh, or something similar to it. And if I go ahead and try to use direct substitution, I've, this is, uh, can't really see it well, but it says x to the negative 4. So if I go ahead and try to sub negative 4 into this guy, what ends up happening is I get 0 over 0. So basically what that means is we have to do something else. So we've used factoring, we've used uh, the conjugate, um, things like that, trying to get something to cancel. Well, another technique that you often have to use, and any time you have fractions like this that are separated, you have to use common denominators. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do here. So I'm going to rewrite this guy, scratch this out. So the limit as x goes to negative 4. So I'm going to find a common denominator for these guys in the top here. So the common denominator is going to be 4x. So this guy needs an x and this guy needs a 4. So that's what I always ask myself. What's this missing? What's this missing? So this is missing an x, this is missing a 4. If they had each that, they'd be the same. So I'll multiply that guy by x over x. So there's my x over 4x. So I'm just going x over x. And this one by 4 over 4. So plus 4 over 4x. So I got my common denominator, just like that. Then I'll rewrite that. So it's over that common denominator. So I have x plus 4 over 4x. I'll divide it by x plus 4. So I have a fraction within a fraction. So what I can do is kind of think of this as over 1. And then I'm going to change that to multiplication and take the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So I have x plus 4 all over 4x times, and I'm flipping this over, 1 over x plus 4. So just like that. So you can kind of see now what's going to happen is that I'm going to get some cancellation, and again, you can tell what's going to cancel based on what your what uh, whoops what limit you're going to have there. So if I got as goes to negative four, I know that x plus four is going to have the cancel out somewhere. So then what I can do is I can go ahead now and rewrite this guy so it's one over four x, and now I can go ahead and evaluate my limit. So one over four times negative four, that's negative one over. 16. So there's a great example of a, a limit where you have to use common denominator. Let's go ahead and do another one. So let's try one that's very similar to that. Got some room over here. So let's call it the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x squared plus 3 minus 1 over 3 all divided by x. So again, let me just zoom up a little bit here on this. All right, so again, if I sub this 0 in, I get 0 on top, 0 on the bottom. So it's 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 is 0, and then x is 0. So, so what I need to do now is find a common denominator. So the common denominator for this size, so this doesn't factor. Sometimes you might have a factor, but it does not. So the common denominator is going to be 3x squared plus 3. So this needs a 3. On the outside, this needs an x squared plus 3. So it's going to change to so 3 over 3x three squared plus 3. So I multiplied this one by 3 over 3 minus, and I'm going to multiply this one by x squared over 3. So x squared plus 3, and then 3x three squared plus 3. So I multiplied it by x squared plus 3 over x squared plus 3. Sorry, I don't know if I said that. <clears throat> All over x. So now what I'm going to do, combine it. So much the same. So then I'm going to have 3 minus x squared minus 3. So the mistake I often see students making is this minus sign applies to everything in the top here. So it changes that to a negative x squared, changes that to a negative 3. A lot of times you'll leave the, the second one the same sign, and then nothing's going to cancel out properly here. So if you make a mistake, nothing cancels, then go back and check and see if you got those signs correct divided by x. So I got kept the bottom denominator the same and then divided by x. So again I'm going to kind of treat this as x over 1 just like the last one. I'm going to flip it over, multiply. So the limit as x goes to 0. So I can also simplify the top here a little bit. These 3's can cancel. And I'm left with negative x squared all over 3x squared plus 3 
times, and then this flips to 1 over x. So I get a little bit of cancellation. I got that guy to go with this guy. <clears throat> so unfortunately, I still have 0 on the top, but that doesn't really matter. So I'll rewrite it. Next, so the top is still 0, but the bottom no longer is. So that's what's important. So now I can sub in my 0, so 0, negative 0, I'm not going to write that. And then 3, 0 squared plus 3. So this bottom part doesn't really matter. Top is 0, so therefore we have 0. <coughs> so that's the limit of that guy. So you can see this is two perfect examples of using the common denominator to evaluate a limit that is in indeterminate form. So you got to remember, guys, anything in indeterminate form, we need to do something with it. We need something to cancel. So a common denominator is often a way that we can get that done. All right, guys, hope you like this video. Um, i got another video on common denominator that I'm going to make right now which I'm, with some harder examples. So if you're looking for something a little more challenging, um, then watch the next video. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.